Hello everybody, today we'll be painting on the Marty Troll of the Argentine Deep Kit. As usual, I start off with a base coat of Chaos Black through a spray can. I then make a mixture of one part metallic black and one part metallic arctic blue. And I thin this down and through an airbrush I spray all the metallic parts of the model. Once that's dry, I take Draken of Nightshade and I wash all the metallic parts with. I apply this fairly thick to get a nice thorough coat and uh, really darkening the metallic color. Once that's done, I make the same mixture again as before, one part metallic black, one part metallic arctic blue. And I add uh, one part emerald alchemy to it, to it, and I apply a first rough highlight of all the metallic parts. For the next highlight. I add one part silver and one part metallic arctic blue to this mixture and I apply a next highlight, leaving the previous highlight a little bit visible, mainly strengthening it towards the edges of the metallic parts. Then I take earth and I block in the skin color with this. Um, this isn't. It's not really important that you use this um, this color. This is just meant as a base coat to work from with the lighter colors. Once the earth has been applied, I make a mixture of four parts dark fle dead flesh, uh, six parts bone white, and one part elf skin tone, and I block in. The entire uh, skin. Uh, this might take two thin layers to, uh, to get a nice good coverage. Once that's done I make a new mixture of one part dead flesh, four parts bone white and one part elf skin tone and I apply uh, a sketchy highlight to all the skin parts. Um, you don't need to be super precise with this, just stay away from the deepest recesses and it's good enough. Once that highlight has been applied, I make a mixture of Army Painter Blue Tone with uh, Vallejo Glaze Medium in a 1 to 4 consistency. And I wash the entire skin tone with it. With this wash, we get a nice and cold and um, deadly looking appearance on the model. Then I take silver and I apply a final highlight to all the metallic parts. I stay on the outer edges just to give a nice shine to all the metallic parts. Then I take a mixture of four parts bone white and one part dead flesh and I apply a highlight to all the skin parts. I can clean up the blue wash uh, if it uh, went anywhere where I did not want it and I stay away from the recesses just strengthening uh, the highlight we applied a couple of coats ago. Then I make the same mixture and I add two parts white to it and I'm going to build up the the skin color with the next highlight 
just picking out the highest uh, parts of the skin and the most outer edges. You can see me drag the paint outwards to basically reinforce the color uh, a couple of times and in this manner you'll get a smooth transition of color. Once that's done, I take Carolberg Crimson and I carefully wash it into the, the mark on the head of the troll. I do this now, so I get the chance to clean it up later with uh, next highlights or highlight. So the final highlight on the skin is consisting of four parts bone white, one part dead flesh and four parts white. And I basically repeat the, the process I did in the previous highlight, only in thinner lines and layers. So dragging the paint towards the edge again, but on a smaller surface on the model, leaving the previous layers visible. Because the model has no eyes, I take care in painting the rest of the face really carefully, um, getting good transition. So um, the lack of eyes isn't going to disturb um, too much. And then I make a mixture of one part black and one part shadow grey and I paint in the pants of the model. <coughs> Just make sure you um, don't go over the already painted parts. In a ratio of one part black and three part shadow grey and I'll apply a rough first highlight to the pants. I leave a little bit of the previous layer visible in the deepest recesses. And this doesn't need to be super neat since we're going to be washing it in the next stage. So next I use non-oil and I wash the pants. Once the non oil is dry, I make a mixture of one part black, three parts shadow grey and three parts Adriatic blue and I reinforce the highlight we applied before uh, the wash. A nice trick for areas like the thigh are to draw a line and then paint from there on. By adding three parts Adriatic blue to this mixture, I now reinforce this uh, previous highlight. Again, with every stage, I leave a little bit of the previous layer visible. And at this point, I start slowly thinking of uh, uh, putting some thin edge highlights where I can. Next, I added three parts white to the mixture. And as you can see, again, apply edge highlights and just strengthen the previous highlights. Always leave a little bit of the previous layer visible. And by dragging the paint out, you get a nice and smooth uh, transi transistance uh, between layers. Transition, I'm sorry. Again, I added three parts white to the mixture for the last highlight and staying on the motor, most outer sides and upper sides of the pants, I applied this highlight. Then I started working on the cloth and I made a mixture of four parts foul green and one part dark blue and I just blocked in all the cloth on the model. This is then followed by a wash of Corelia green shade. And I played around with it a bit so that it sticked in the most uh, deepest areas and it wasn't 
uh, that thick on the most outer areas. Some of these areas are kind of hard to reach, so and then I'm more uh, precise with my wash where I want it to be. Uh, once that's dry, I made the same mixture, four parts fall green and one part dark blue, and I applied the first highlight to all the raised areas. Then I added two parts Adriatic Blue to this mixture and I applied a next highlight using the same method I've been using before, using it to strengthen the color and get a smooth transition and a buildup of color. I then add two parts white to this mixture and I repeat this process. And as for the majority of the cloth, this is going to be the final highlight. So um, I take a bit of care. It, um, it has the desired effect. Um, staying on the edges and get it on there smoothly. The markings on the cloth, I now continue on working because I want them to be based of, uh, of the same color. So I just added uh, two parts, two more par parts white to the mixture, and I started strengthening the markings on, uh, on the cloth. I then added four more parts white to the mixture and I repeated the process. And now there's a nice color difference between the cloth and the marking where they still are roughly the same color. But from a small distance when the model is on the table you will be able to see the difference in color. And that's basically what I try to achieve here. I then went on and painted his shoes and I brought them in with a mixture of one part beastie brown and one part earth. And this is then followed by a wash of Agrax earth shade. Uh, make sure you don't hit any um, parts you, don't, you already painted and this is just to apply a little bit of shading. Then going back to the same mixture, one part misty brown, one part earth, I apply a first highlight, uh, leaving the agrax earth shade in the deepest recesses visible. And I gradually start building up the color toward the, towards the edges of the, of the shoes. For the next stage, I add one part earth to the mixture. And I apply a first highlight. Um, or actually, it's the second highlight, but I reinforce that previous color. Uh, working towards the edges, just slowly dragging the paint out. Then I add one part khaki, and I repeat the process, uh, leaving the previous layers visible. And just gradually getting this, uh, this a little bit lighter color on there and for nearly all of the steps that I apply um, I just continue until I'm happy with the result I'm getting so I add one part more khaki to the mixture and I apply uh, an edge highlight to the areas where I feel they should be on the points of the shoes and uh, the edges I then took black and painted in the handle of the weapon.
and then using old copper I block in all the golden parts on the model. Then using Agrox Earthshade, I wash all the golden parts. On the open areas, on the uh, just next to the blade, uh, wash tends to stick in there and clog it up. Uh, what I do, I take the model to a side and then I just blow the wash out by just uh, blowing through my mouth and blow it onto a tissue or something. Don't do this too hard, uh, but we want to keep those um, those areas open. So I made a mixture of one part black and one part anthracite gray, and I applied the uh, highlights to the weapon handle, just on the side and the top. And this is then followed by a highlight of pure anthracite gray on the top of the uh, weapon handle. And I applied this in two coats and because it's an airbrush paint. Paint it's so thin. Um, there's a big chance that um, it won't cover at once, so then you just apply two coats. <laughs> I then took Victorian Brass and I applied the first highlight to the golden parts. Just staying on the upside of the parts and uh, the most visible parts. Then I'm going to repeat this process with silver, but now I use really small dots of silver and put them on the most outer sides of the golden parts. Once the silver has been applied and is dry, I take Seraphim Sepia and I wash all the golden parts with it. Um, this wash will tone the silver down to a more gold-like color, as you'll see in a second, uh, once it's, uh, it's done. And it will give a nice uh, transi uh, transition for the golden parts with uh, nice blingy edges. Then I took black and I painted in the gem on the belly of the model. I then made a mixture of one part black and four parts Adriatic blue and I draw a, a, a line uh, on the gem from on the left side let's say 30 to 40 percent um, from the bottom to the top to on the right side roughly at 60 70 percent. Uh, once that has been applied I take pure Adriatic blue and I build in a bit more color leaving the previous layer just a little bit visible. This is then followed by a mixture of one part Adriatic blue and one part dead white. And I repeat this process leaving the previous visible or previous layer visible. Then using pure dead white but uh, thinned down I play a uh, painted dot in the upper left half of the gem and a thin white line in the bottom right half of the gem. Then, uh, using dark flesh tone, I paint in the, the hairs hanging from the model. I'm not sure what it is, but I decided to go for a red-like uh, color. The coral on the base is uh, painted in the exact same way. Uh, that's already finished here. But I left out one layer, and I'll let you know which layer I left out. Uh, whilst the, that layer was drying, I decided to start working on the blade and I painted night blue over the entire blade. So 
So back to the hairs, I made a mixture of one part dark flesh and two parts bloody red and I uh, apply the highlights. Uh, staying on the outer parts, painting in all the hairs individually. This layer has also been applied to the coral. Then I added two parts hot orange to the mixture and I repeated the process strengthening the color building color up towards the outer edges and the most uh, upper sides of the, of the hairs. For the hairs I then added four parts hot orange to the mixture and I uh, repeated the previous layer reinforcing the color building it up towards the edges. This is the layer I didn't apply to the coral on the base. Um, I could have dry brushed the hairs but uh, dry brushing is um, a bit more messy technique and it's, uh, it's usually you don't get um, as good a result when just uh, building the color up. So as a final highlight, uh, I took hot orange and I applied it to the most upper and outer areas of the hair. Um, this color has been applied to the coral as well, uh, only on the outer parts of the coral. So that left a weapon to do. And as you can see, I uh, masked it off because I'm going to airbrush the weapon. So I took Adriatic Blue and I, uh, I just went over the outside of the model, uh, keeping the night blue visible in the middle of the blade. I then made a mixture of uh, Adriatic Blue and White in a 1 to 1 ratio, roughly. Doesn't need to be 100% um, precise 1 to 1. And I strengthened the color of the airbrush towards the outside, um, leaving the previous layer a little bit visible. Um, this is one of the things that why I like to use my airbrush. It speeds this up immensely. If you would like to get an idea of how to do uh, something like this with a, with a brush, um, I'd suggest you go to my Necron Cryptek video, where I, although I use a different color, I basically do the same thing, but with a paintbrush. And it's taking a lot of time to do that. Next, uh, with pure white, I go over the edges again, just to get this really sharp highlight on the outer edges blade. Once that has been applied, I'm going to take white and with a brush I'm going to highlight all the edges on the, on the blade. So not just the outside, there's also lines on the inside of the blade and I highlight those as well. I even do this if it's already in the white part because um, when you apply paint with a brush it always looks different than with an airbrush. Once that's done I took the model outside uh, for a coat with dull coat. I prefer testers dull coat. And once that was dry, I applied a coat of Tamiya Clear on the entire blade. And this gives a high glossy effect. And um, in my opinion, for this model, it adds to the aquatic feel. So that finished up the model. 
uh, whilst I was editing this video, I all of a sudden remembered that I didn't uh, varnish the gem. Usually after putting a dull coat on it, I'll gloss varnish the gem to make it pop more. Um, I have done it in the meantime, but um, it's not on the video. I'm sorry for that. You can just use any gloss varnish you want. So, I hope you liked this video. Um, please like, share and subscribe if you want to. And dislike as well if you want, didn't like the video, but please let me know what you didn't like. So again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.